Today we'll create this stylish yet simple map animation with a line going from point A to point B and a camera zoom out at the end. Hi, I'm Dennis. I've been doing motion design for 17 years. I've created designs used by NBC Universal, the Boston Globe, and some Hollywood cinematographers. And now I'll show you that creating a map animation is not that difficult. We'll make this animation in three simple steps. Step 1. We'll create the background. Step 2. We'll add titles and a line, and we'll animate them. And step 3. We'll create a camera animation to finalize the look. And make sure to watch the whole of this video to find out how I add the special sauce on top to make the animation look professional. Step 1. The background. First, let's create the composition. It's 4K 24 FPS, or just select this preset. And it's 14 seconds long. Let's name it a simple map. Next, let's drop the map into our new composition. This is a London poverty map that was released by London School of Economics on Unsplash.com. And of course, you can use your own map. We are using this map as an example. Now let's make this map black and white. Go to Effects and Presets and type in Tint. Drop the Tint effect over the map. We have desaturated the map and now we need to invert the colors. To invert the colors, press this Swap Colors button. And now all our whites are now black and all the black colors are now white. Next we'll go to the Effects and Presets panel once again and type in Curves. Drop this effect below the tint and pull this top right side down. We are making this map a little bit less bright. Also, we can drag the central part down a little bit. This will make our mid colors less bright. Step 2. Titles and Align. Once we have a map, let's add the titles. First, let's find the spot where we begin. It's gonna be somewhere here, right here. To add the title, Select the Type tool and drag it over the preview window. Select the font Cormorant Infant Semi Bold. You can find this font on Google Fonts. Or you can use any other similar serif font. Set the text size to 140 pixels and stretch the text vertically by 108%. And now type in London Docs. Click right here to deselect the text layer. Drag it somewhere here. It will do for now. Then we'll add Glow. Go to Effects and Presets and type in Glow. Drag it over the title and now you can see a little bit of Glow. Set the Glow Radius to 3 to make it spread a little bit less. Then select the Glow, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it and set the Glow Radius to 20. This will make a tight core glow and the second layer of Glow will spread it more to the outside. Now let's pick our final destination. Select the London Docs text, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it and place it somewhere where the animation will end. It's approximately right here. We don't need to be precise right now because we'll fix it later. And type in your title. For me it's called Depot. Let's define the start and ending points with the help of circles. So hit Q a few times until you see an ellipse tool right here. And then hold Ctrl Alt Shift or Command Option Shift, click and drag to create a circle. Let's remove the stroke from this circle, click here and set stroke options to none. The fill color is FF8C08. And let's rename our shape layer to Circle 1 and place it somewhere here. Select the Circle 1, hit S to open scale controls and create a keyframe by hitting this stopwatch right here. This will be the end of our animation. The circle will scale up to this size. Drag it to first second and now set the scale to zero. Now a circle has disappeared and if we drag the time indicator, we will see that circle well grows but in a weird way. This is happening because the anchor point is right here for this circle. To fix it, select this Pan Behind tool, click on this anchor point and drag it to the center. The spot will animate from the center, but it's not perfectly in center. You can try to align it manually or you can use my free script and with a single click of a button right here, don't forget to select the layer, you can place the anchor point in the very center of a spot or any other layer. 
you can find this fresh script on my Patreon page. Also, on my Patreon you will find the project file for this and all my other tutorials. Maps, timelines, investigation boards, text animations, you name it. It's all there. Check it out on patreon.com slash danishjelen. And now let's also quickly reposition the anchor point for the London docks and call depot. Let's make the circle shine just like the London docks text. So select the London docks, go to effects controls panel and select the both glow effects. Hit control C, go back to circle one and hit control V. This way we've copied the glow, but we want a little bit more glow on this one. So select the glow too and hit control D to duplicate it once again. Now it's more bright. We have the starting point and now let's select the end point. Duplicate the circle by hitting Ctrl D and place it at the end point. Let it be somewhere here. Let's align the text. This one goes below. Don't worry that it disappears for now, we will fix it a bit later. And this one goes somewhere here. We have two points and the text. Now we need to connect these two points with a line. Select the pen tool, click right here on the fill and set it to none because we don't need the fill, but we need the stroke. So click here, set the color, hit OK, and the stroke width is 8 pixels for now. Make sure no layers are selected and start to click in the very center of the first point, right here. It's important to start with the point of the beginning because the animation that we are gonna create later is gonna start from the first point that we've created. So it's going to start right here. Then just click and it will create a path. The line and the circle look different right now, but when we add glow, they will look exactly the same. So let's continue with adding points. Let's move this circle too, right here to the very end of this line. Now our line looks way too straight. If you don't need to mark the exact route, you can make it a little bit more interesting. With some interesting turns, it's gonna look a little bit better. To add the points to the existing line, you can hover over the line with the pen tool selected. You will see this plus and click. Now you've added the point to your line and you can drag it. Let's extend this part right here. Now our line looks a little bit more interesting. Let's rename the layer to line and copy the glow from the circle. It doesn't matter whether it's circle one or circle two. Select all the glow effects, hit Ctrl C to copy, select the line and hit Ctrl V. Now drag the line below the circle one and circle two. It looks way better now, eh? But I don't really like that this line ends not in the center of the circle, but somewhere at the end of the circle. Let's select the line, select the pen tool, and let's draw this line through the previous street. Like this, looks much better. Now we need to animate this line. To do so, select the line, unfold it, open the contents, and then click right here, add trim paths. Open the trim path, go to very beginning, and set the keyframe for the end. Drag this keyframe somewhere to the 10th second. This will be the end of our animation, meaning the line will be at its full length at the end, at this keyframe. We'll need to drag the end to zero. This way we've created the animation that begins from this point and it goes to this point. Let's make the beginning and the end of this animation a little bit more smooth. Select both of the keyframes, right click on any of the keyframes, keyframe assistant, easy ease, or hit F9 on your keyboard. This has smoothed out the line animation. It begins slowly, then it speeds up, and then it slows down when it reaches the end. Oh, and I forgot to add the animation to the titles. No worries, we'll fix it really fast. Select the call depot text because we can see it, unlike this text, then go to effects and presets and type in Fade up. Go to the very beginning of the timeline, then select the animation preset Fade Up Characters and drag and drop this animation over the call depot. It has disappeared. 
but it has this text animation, which works just fine. Then select London Docs, go to the very beginning and drop it over the London Docs too. So now we have two animations. The last touch for our style would be adding a vignette. To add a vignette, go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. Rename it to Vignette, go to Effects and Presets and type in Curves. Drop it over the Vignette layer and drop the central part down. It made everything more dark, but now we'll fix it. We'll make it so that the dark part would be only on the outside and in the center it will be right like this. To do so, hit Q on the keyboard a few times until you see the Eclipse tool selected right here. Then just double click on the Ellipse tool while the Vignette layer is selected. This will create a mask, but it made the mask that's dark on the inside and bright on the outside. To fix it, click the inverted button, but now this mask is sharp. Well, we'll fix it too. Unfold the mask and set the mask feather to 600 pixels. Voila, we have fixed it. Also, to avoid all this hustle, you can create a vignette with the help of my free script. Make sure no layers are selected and hit the create a vignette. Nothing happened now, but once you drop the curves, you'll see that the edges are dark now. You can find the script for free on my Patreon at patreon.com slash We don't need this vignette anymore. Let's make this vignette that we have created with the help of a script a little bit more smooth. Select the vignette layer, hit F to open feather controls and set it to 600 pixels. By default it's 350 pixels. Step 3. Camera animation. So the style is ready. The only thing we have to do now is to animate the camera. To animate the camera, of course, first we have to create a camera. So go to layer, new, camera. Leave everything by default. Hit OK. Now we have a warning that we have to have 3D layers in order to use the camera. And yes, none of our layers is 3D, but we'll turn them on 3D just now. Select all the layers except for the vignette and click right here. This will switch the layer mode to 3D. And now we'll be able to control the camera movement and everything will work. But camera alone is hard to control. We will need to add a new layer with the help of which we will control the camera. Go to Layer, New, Null Object. Rename it to Camera Controls. Make it 3D layer and parent the camera to Camera Controls. If you cannot see the parent controls right here, you can either click F4 to change the mode or click right here to switch off and switch on the panels. The camera is now being controlled with the help of camera controls null object. Now let's fix this part that was unfixed for so long. Select the camera controls layer, hit P, go to the very beginning of the timeline and drop the camera down and zoom in. We need it to be somewhere here approximately. Let's see where everything starts. Everything starts right here in the docs. So let's go down a bit and zoom in a bit. Now the camera animation starts with the London docs. But wait, we don't have any keyframes. So let's create a keyframe for the position. This is the beginning for our animation. Then let's move to the end point. Let's go to the 10 second and move the camera to the end point. It's going to be somewhere here. Now the camera moves in the straight line from point A to point B. And now we'll create the point C. We will zoom out. By the way, hold shift to zoom out better or change any value faster while holding shift, drag. And it will change everything way faster. Let's zoom out somewhere here. here. And here is the camera animation. Point A, then it goes to point B, and then it goes to point C. Now it's not smooth. Let's make it smoother by selecting all the keyframes. Right click on any keyframe. Keyframe assistant. Easy ease. It has smoothed out the animation of all the keyframes in the camera animation sequence. But we'll make it even smoother. Select any keyframe and go to graph editor. We now can see the animation curves for all the animation. It starts just fine. Continues also quite good but it doesn't stay here for too long and it immediately zooms out. So drag this handle on the right to the right side. This way the camera will zoom out smoothly and it will have more time sitting right here on this spot. And also drag this handle on the very right side to the left. This way we'll make this zoom out animation start slowly, then go really fast 
and then slow down slowly again. Part 4. The Secret Sauce The animation looks really well, but it's a bit stuttery because it lacks motion blur. So let's add the motion blur. Select all the layers except for these ones and click right here. This will add the motion blur and it has automatically turned on the motion blur right here. If it's not enabled by default, click right here to enable it. Now everything is blurred. It has motion blur. You can see it very clearly right here in this shot. Here's how it looks without the motion blur. Here's the difference. And yeah, the motion blur makes the glow shift towards red a bit and I think it looks cool. Also, we have a few things to fine tune. First one is the line is very sharp on its turns. We'll make it more round. Unfold the line, go to shape, stroke and set the line cap to round cap and line join to round join. This has made our line more smooth and round on the edges. Next fix would be our call depot. So it animates at the very same time as the London docks and this spot right here. So once the camera approaches it, we can see no animation at all. Let's set the time indicator to approximately 8 seconds and 15 frames. Select the call depot and circle two. Let's put them together right here and drag the beginning of these two layers or just click left square bracket and it will automatically set the beginning of the layer to your time indicator. Now it's invisible, but once we move the time indicator, you can see it's growing and the text is animating. You can see that the line is on top of the circle, circle two. Let's move it above the line. Now the line is below the circle. And the second part is just specific for me, might be for you. The London Docs title is really close to this edge. So let's move it somewhere here. Now it looks way more pleasant. And we can also shift the circle to somewhere here. And the line can also begin from here. Select the pen tool, delete the extra keyframes by selecting them and hitting the delete button and drag it to the center. And also the background is black. Let's make it the color of the map. To do so, go to layer, new, solid and in color, click on the dropper and sample the color from here. Then drop it on the background. I can see the very last fix we can do right here is to start our camera a little bit lower because we don't have enough time to read the London docs text. Select the camera controls, hit P to open the position controls, go to the very beginning and drag the position somewhere here and a little bit lower. Also, let's center the second keyframe. Let's go right here so that it ends at this point and then it zooms out. You can switch on the title action safe margins and they will help us a lot. This is the center of the map. Well, the center on the width. Then switch off the title action safe and drop the London docks a little bit lower right here and call depot a little bit closer to the circle right here. And this is how the final animation looks like. Like and subscribe. Check my Patreon for the project files. Also, if you ever wanted to make maps like Johnny Harris, check out this video.